In this problem, we're going to try to solve this equation with square roots. Whenever you have an equation with square roots, it's really important that when you're done, you check your answers. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. So the first step uh, to solve for x is to isolate the square root. Let's go ahead and start by subtracting this x from both sides. So minus x, minus x. That's going to give us minus square root of 2x minus 8. And that's equal to 8 minus x. Now this negative sign uh, is kind of annoying. So what we can do is we can multiply both sides by negative 1. So if we multiply the left-hand side by negative 1, we can also multiply the right-hand side by negative 1. And then here negative and negative is positive. So we just get the square root of 2x minus 8. And then on the right-hand side, we can distribute the negative 1. So negative 1 times negative x is going to make it a positive x, much nicer. And negative 1 times positive 8 is going to make it a minus 8. All right, now that we've isolated the square root, we need to get rid of it. And so to do that, what you do is you square both sides. So well, I'm going to put a parenthesis here and a 2 and a parenthesis here and a 2. So squaring this, we'll get rid of the square root. So we have 2x minus 8. And there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to do it maybe the most basic way. Whenever it's squared, you can just write it twice and multiply it out. So let's do that. All right. So this is 2x minus 8 equals. And now we'll distribute. So most people use FOIL, and that's fine. I basically do also. I just take this one and then multiply it by the x. So x squared. And then take this one and multiply it by the negative 8. So we're just distributing. So minus 8x. So you just take the x and multiply it by both, and then you take the negative 8 and you multiply it by both. So doing it here, negative 8x. And the very last one, negative 8 times negative 8 is going to give us positive 64. All right, let's see what's happening here. So here we still have 2x minus 8. On the right-hand side, we have some like terms, x squared minus 8x minus 8x is going to give us a minus 16x and then we have our plus 64. So this is a quadratic equation so whenever you have a quadratic equation um, you should always set it equal to 0 in order to try to solve it. So let's do that. We'll subtract the 2x so minus 2x minus 2x and we'll also add the 8 so plus 8 plus Eight. These cancel, these cancel, so we have x squared minus 16x minus 2x is minus 18x. And then 64 plus 8 is going to be 72. <laughs> it was like the hardest part of the problem <laughs> is adding those numbers. So sometimes you get hung up on, you know, on, on little stuff. Okay, uh, I hope this factors. It usually does. These problems are, you know, somewhat rigged. So I don't know how to factor it yet, but I know it should look like this. All right, we need two numbers that multiply to uh, 72 and add to uh, 18. So eight times nine, eight times nine is 72, right? Uh, but that's not going to, um, if you have eight and nine and you add them up, that's gonna give you 17. So that's, that's not gonna work, right? We can't use, uh, the 8 and uh, the 9. So that will not work. So what else multiplies to 72? Let's think. 36 times 2. That'll work, right? Uh, 36 can be written as 18 times 2. Just trying to like create like a little factor tree here just to see if we can figure this out. Um, so 18 times 4 would give us 72. That also won't work. 1 times 72, that also won't work. What about 12? I know 12 times something is 72. 12 times uh, 6. Yeah, that 6 times 2 is 12. Carry the 1. Boom. Wow, that was a lot of work. <laughs> so 12 times 6. So sometimes it's obvious. Maybe you're watching this video you thought, wow, like 12 times 6. What's going on with this guy? Sometimes it takes you a little bit more time for certain things. That's okay. That's normal. That's just part of math. So 12 times 6 is 72. And they're both going to be negative because they add to negative 18. 
nice problem. You have a product equal to zero, so that means you set each factor equal to zero. So x minus 12 equals zero, and x minus six equals zero. So here we get x equals 12, and here we get x equals six. So now we unfortunately do have to check these because some of these might not work. So let me go ahead and scroll up because I don't have the problem written down. It's, uh, there it is, x minus the square root of two x minus eight. So here's our original question, x minus the square root of two x minus eight equals eight. Okay, this is the original question. So now we actually have to take these numbers and plug them in and then check. So let's check, let's check 12. So we get 12 minus the square root of two times 12 minus eight, and that should be equal to eight. So it's 12 minus square root of 24 minus eight, and that should be equal to eight. Let's see. So 12 minus the square root of 16, and that should be equal to eight. 12 minus four is equal to eight. Eight is equal to eight. Yes, boom. That is one of the answers. Now let's go ahead and check six. So check six. So go back to this one. So six minus the square root of two times six minus eight, and that should be equal to eight. Six minus the square root of 12 minus eight, and that should be equal to eight. Six minus the square root of four, and again, that should be equal to eight. 6 minus 2 is equal to 8. 4 is equal to 8. No, the world will end. <laughs> no good, right? So no good. So it's not equal to 8. So the only answer in this case is 12. If you're curious, this 6 has a really uh, funny name. It's called an extraneous solution. I don't think the question's asking for that, but if you wanted to know what it's called, it's basically an answer that doesn't check. So it's extraneous. So they call it an extraneous solution. So 12 is the only answer to this problem. Quite a bit of work, uh, a little bit more difficult, uh, these problems. They take a little bit more work. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.